This time, we open our time capsule at a Covington, Kentucky museum, where the past, especially transportation history, comes alive for people of all ages. The Beringer Crawford Museum in Covington is just across the Ohio River from Cincinnati. The museum was originally devoted to natural history, and there are still some exhibits on that subject. But the emphasis was changed some years ago to concentrate on transportation. Still, there's enough flexibility that exhibits and programs are tailored to what students are learning in the classroom. We have served, you know, hundreds of thousands of children. We bring in close to about eight or 9,000 school kids per year, and they do anything from digging for fossils to pretending they're a Civil War soldier to singing songs or dancing from the Civil War era, um, things that are tied directly connect and connected to their curriculum. The museum's emphasis on transportation covers the gamut of the subject, from flatboats all the way to the modern days of air travel. With the Ohio River only a mile or so away, it's a natural starting point for transportation in the region. The earliest settlers arrived by flatboat. After the uh, Revolutionary War, uh, settlers came over from the Appalachian Mountains down to Pittsburgh. There, uh, they built their uh, flatboats and they would put everything they would need because most of them were farmers that came to this area and they loaded their livestock, their seeds, their plows and everything in onto the flatboat and come down the river. People visiting this area from New York are astonished to see what appears to be the Brooklyn Bridge connecting the cities of Covington, Kentucky and Cincinnati, Ohio. That's because both were built by John Roebling. The one in Covington was first, despite financial panics and the Civil War. We had the Panic of 1857 and the, and the money ran out, so they stopped the bridge. Uh, the Civil War came along and they did not put the flooring in the bridge, but in 1864 they uh, got enough money together again and they started building the bridge, so it opened as a toll bridge. Uh, you had to pay three cents to walk across it. And when it opened in December of 1867, um, they said 300,000 people walked across it in, in the weekend. Also after the Civil War, streetcars came to the region. First pulled by horses and later electrified, streetcars became an integral piece of the area's transportation story. We had the streetcar Kentucky parked here on the first floor and the streetcar operated uh, from 1892 uh, probably until 1950. This particular car here did. And uh, the elect it's an electric car, of course. Horse cars came before that here in, in Covington and in, in, uh, Cincinnati. The restored streetcar at the museum was the type still in service during the World War II era, often taking soldiers to a nearby army installation. Well, the last of the streetcar Real popular, I guess, was around World War II when people would still really rely on the streetcar. It was still a little bit after the Depression. People didn't have that much money, many people, and they still relied on the streetcar. And then, and then uh, the streetcar became, became handy uh, during World War II. It could take uh, soldiers to Fort Thomas, uh, to the new, to the uh, Fort Thomas recruiting station there. And the influence of the Ohio River goes beyond the first settlers and initial bridges. The region was a hub of steamboat activity, which is why the museum chose to have a replica of a packet boat on display. And severe flooding of the Ohio and nearby Licking Rivers are also featured in the displays, as are historic photographs of the rare times when the rivers froze over. For many years, the Delta Queen had its home port at Cincinnati, and it was once owned by the Green Line Company, the same owners as Northern Kentucky Streetcar System. The museum's scale model town brings a lot of history together. It shows that Covington, Kentucky was an urban community with streetcars, compact housing units, and streets crowded with a variety of vehicles. 
the replica Roebling Suspension Bridge brings another touch of reality for visitors. Museum officials say that they get great satisfaction when visitors make a first-hand connection with the past. You know, I can't tell you the number of times where somebody will walk up and say, oh my goodness, that's my aunt, or that's my uncle's house, or that was my grandfather's, and all of a sudden they feel a connection, you know, that they belong here, you know, and they have that pride um, to be able to say, wow, my family roots go back, you know, this generation um, here in Northern Kentucky. Whether people are interested in learning about prehistoric times, or the not so long ago days in the 1950s when convertibles and drive-in movies were popular. The Beringer Crawford Museum is a fun and informative place to visit.